Hey guys, it's Claire. Welcome back. This is our last garden tour in February. Can you believe it? And if you're new here, welcome. We are documenting our attempt to grow food for a family of four this year. So there's more about that in our channel trailer and I'll put a link down in the description. Also, please note that we have video descriptions in every single video where you can um, skip around by chapter and what we talk about just to make it easier for you guys if you're interested in one specific thing. So feel free to do that as well. So let me give you an update of what happened during the week. Okay, so this week was a lot of prep. We're trying to get ready for our last frost, which we think is going to be somewhere in early to mid-April. So we've been getting flower beds ready and we took out four trees. And that resulted in this happening. But the trees are going to stay on the property and give back to us now in a new way. We have enough mulch for our almost one acre and it's just wheelbarrow load after wheelbarrow load, getting things covered. You may remember that was where our compost was. This is where we grew green beans and pumpkins last year. And then we got some tomatoes in, so I'm looking forward to that. Those are those celeries I potted up in the Valentine's Day video. Hot peppers, we also have the Hungarian banana peppers, and we've got some Greek oregano. Dill, last year we grew all those cucumbers and we didn't grow any dill, so we've learned from that mistake, and some basil that I went ahead and potted up. And with that, this is our weekly drone shot of the garden into February 2021. And I gotta tell you, at the end of this video, we've got a really cool drone shot for you, so stick around for that. I'm in the soon-to-be potting shed. It's still not decorated and painted or any of that kind of stuff, but it has been working out really nice as a place to be able to pot things. So I want to be able to do that. We've got to find a spot to plant two trees because Stark Brothers delivered a peach tree and an apple tree that apparently I ordered one night, in the middle of the night, months ago. Um, I have a vague recollection of doing this. In fact, I just said to Dawn the other day, I was like, I think maybe I ordered some trees and then the next day they showed up. And I was like, yeah, I did, I ordered some trees. Um, so I guess there's worse things that you could be doing in the middle of the night when you can't sleep. <laughs> um, but they came bare root and so we need to find a spot that has a ton of sun and Don needs to get digging. We have terrible soil. I hate it for him because it's really heavy in clay and it's just not even something I can really help with, but he's super strong and awesome about that kind of stuff. So we'll get those trees in the ground today and we'll film some of that for you. You're doing a good job, Em. So this is what I was saying earlier about that red clay. It's just really tough. And we got a lot of weeds in there. This is what the trees look like. And so when they say bare root, this is what it means. It means it's literally bare roots. Or you can buy them already potted in dirt. And you just plant the tree in the dirt. But these came bare root. So I thought it would be fun to do a broccoli experiment. This is the first year that we've tried to grow broccoli from seed. The broccolis that are in the other bed are starts that we got at the farmer's market last year. Um, so I have these broccoli seedlings and I have now potted them up twice and they're looking like they need to be potted up again. And broccoli is cold hardy. So in theory, broccoli should be able to come out here, but I'm not sure if the seedlings are strong enough. So what I've done is I took a few of the seedlings out of the seedling tray and I went ahead and put them in the ground and then I'm going to compare how those do to the ones that I leave in the seedling tray until about two weeks before the first frost and just kind of compare how they do because I would love to get these all in the ground but I'm so afraid if we have another massive frost and the seedlings aren't established enough that I'll kill them and we'll lose all of our broccoli. Um, and while I'm extraordinarily talented at killing my plants, I'm, I'm trying to be less talented at that. So um, let me show you where I planted them. There's one, there's two, and there's three, and then there's a few over there. 
And I planted them in between the radishes because radishes are actually a trap crop for the bugs that like to eat the broccoli. So my hope is that this will help us with some of our pest control issues. This is some of our older broccoli and you can see that even with weekly neem oil, they just get eaten alive. So okay guys, this was in the cabbage and lettuce bed. This ugly little snarky gross thing. So we talk about pest control, organic pest control. I need to go and give some Diametrius earth gets rid of all that stuff. So that needs to happen today because that's part of what's getting to my plants. I'm totally committed to organic gardening. I mean, I really do not want to have to use any sort of chemical pesticide. I want to be able to walk out here and pull something out of the dirt and eat it. That's important to me. But I'm also committed to not losing my harvest to pests. And if you've been following us for a minute, you know that we tried to do this last year. And I would say one of our biggest reasons that we failed was not because we couldn't grow food, it's because we couldn't protect it from the pest damage. And to give you an example, we grew a ton of cantaloupe last year. We didn't get to eat a single one of them. They all got attacked by animals and critters and, and slugs before they were fully ripe. So that's a priority for us this year is figuring out how to stay on top of pest damage, use other plants better, and just educate ourselves on how we can, you know, get a, get ahead of this a little bit. Obviously this broccoli, and if you look at our cabbage, it's the same. Um, so I really want to experiment with trap crops this year. So it'll be fun to watch this broccoli compared to the broccoli in that bed with the radishes. And remember, the radishes grow really fast. So the radishes are going to be harvested before it's time for the broccoli to really fill out and use that space. So um, let me actually show you a radish. We've got a cool one coming up. So that's just a traditional red radish. And then we also, there's another one right here, starting to come up. You guys know I'm obsessed with my Brussels sprouts, but that can't be good. All those yellow leaves. It's happening over here as well. I'm guessing it's just too much water. We've just had so much rain. So I'm going to trim all those back today and just really try to baby these things because I do love some Brussels sprouts. So does Dawn. And Donna is such a picky eater, he'll tell you he's not, but he is. Um, that the fact that he'll eat them makes me want to grow 5,000 of them. So we have been out here all day, and we have gotten so much done. But the sun is starting to set, and the last thing that we need to do is... To plant these two baby fruit trees. We're planting these right on the edge of the garden, kind of near the area where we took out those three big trees last week. So we're hoping that... They'll get a lot of sun now that those big trees are out of the way and uh, grow up and give us lots of delicious fruit. So when Dawn and I were finding a place to live, I can tell you I did not want a yard. I did not want the upkeep or the maintenance. I had no desire to spend my days outside doing anything in a yard. So the irony that here we are in our second year of trying to grow food for a family of four is not lost on us. And I think what we've come to is just realizing that sometimes things work out for you in ways they're supposed to that you could have never imagined. So we're going with it and we're trusting and we're glad you're along for the ride.